converted usage doors are open at the beginning of the ceremony, ceremony of course, because it won't work otherwise, but they're shut at the end. So once you're done, you're done. Most people using a Ouija board don't know they're opening it, number one, opening a door, and have no idea how to close it, number two. They're closing the door, closing the board, and putting it in the box, and then passing. That's it. Well, that doesn't really work. If you're going to use a Ouija board, I suggest that you don't. Obviously, it's free will. You can do whatever you want to. My suggestion is not to. If you want to try creating a spirit board, by all means. But be prepared. We have somebody who made one. She is a medium, and it took her months to do this. It took her months and months, so it's a lot of hard work. It would be one of those, if you did it, again, it's determination. And debunking, we've pretty much been talking about it all session long. It can be anything. You know, look for the most logical reasons first. I would hope that that sentence itself would be logical enough, but amazingly enough, it can spill it out for some people. Like, really? I should really look for that first? Like, yeah. Think outside the box a little bit. We had instances where stuff that was happening on the roof was traveling down the air ducts all the way into the basement of all things. That's a long way. It was a two-story house. Plus an attic. You're talking 40 feet to be traveled. Just to throw us off a little bit, go right outside the box, and end up literally climbing on top of the roof and recreating the whole thing. So, we're going to do a little bit of debunking here. We have uh, what's called a REM pod. Can I get a volunteer, anybody, to come on up? It's not going to be all that, uh, we're not gonna hurt you. All we're that exciting. Fight. Anybody? Yes, some sort of a response. Where are you from? That's pretty much what we do. We ask questions and we wait to see if we can get a response. And because we get a response, we say, okay, let's answer yes or no. Are you from? Ah. Can you light it up? Yes. Okay. And then we'll leave them off for no. And then that's what we'll normally do. So you would think, because there's nothing around it, there's nobody touching it, if you were in a different situation, cemetery, bar, restaurant, somebody's house, you would have gotten pretty excited. Let's see, you know, everybody was thinking. I can pretty much control it. Right now I just put it into a little mode mode, but it's okay. <laughs> While I'm transmitting, it makes it light up. Depending on how far away I'm standing away from it, it can make it do whatever I pretty much want it to do. When I stop transmitting, it pretty much shut off. Like I said, I can pretty much do it again. Good job. We can manipulate. Have each of us had? My 
worst one. We went down to Louisville, Kentucky to Waverly Hills Sanatorium. This is why I say it's the worst. We went to the morgue. And uh, yeah, just a little history in the place for those who haven't heard it. 53,000 people died in the 50 years that it was a tuberculosis hospital from 1906 to 1956. It was shut down obviously because he had a cure. Six years later, it was opened up as a geriatric hospital. Six years later, it was shut down by the state for neglect and abuse. Over 70,000 people died in those six years. Do the math. 60,000 people died in that location. He called me a little creepy. When you're in the morgue, they have the original three drawers still there from the sanatorium. I had the brilliant idea of laying on the drawer and being slid into the original drawer. Me pushing him in head first and going, smile, click, I'm going to be in the hallway. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> that is what I did. He That's loved what we my did. Husband. It's kind of a nice <laughs> skill to get into when you confront your fears. But I'm not claustrophobic or anything. I stayed there for about 20 minutes, which apparently is the record in that place. But I've been touched, pulled, pulled, my hair pulled, pushed. Um, you name it. I pretty much had it happen to me. This I did not. They pulled me out, and the only way that I can describe it is if somebody was holding a big lighter right here on my chest. It's a little warm, as close to where it is. It actually starts to spread out a little bit. And I felt this in my chest, and my stomach was waking up from like when your arm falls asleep and you get the little ants and stuff. That's what it felt like on my whole upper torso. I lifted my shirt. I have three purple, purple, purple scratches straight across my chest. And we tried everything. I drew blood on myself, trying to recreate this thinking, well, maybe I scratched myself. But no matter which way I put my hand, there was no way I could get that configuration across my chest. All the marks that I had put on myself literally dissipated within about an hour or so. These will still on me the next morning. No explanation. They never bled, never stabbed, never numbed. Never swelled. You know, when you scratch yourself, it gets a little puffy inside. Never even did that. Well, on the tape, I think, and I'm not even going to say the correct, the, the actual words verbatim because I cursed. Um, but it was more along the lines of, what in the world is that? <laughs> Fill in the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I go, honey, stand still. I want to take a picture. Do it again. I can't do it. You know, loving wife. I gotta take pictures. <laughs> um, Who doesn't want to play? Come on up. Come on up and play with the. Mine. The first I don't know. I don't know the best one. Um. Uh, I've had so many stuff. So many things from Solo on. Uh, I've had mediums call me a 
cards are our old name. 